I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I am really excited about my next guest, Clive Morrison. We actually met at a live event. It was the Thumbtack event uh, some time ago. It seems like I've known him forever, okay? Because <laughs> I'm ringing his phone, asking him about, you know, computer stuff. And, you know, he has a Facebook group and we interact on that. So, I just feel like I have known him for quite some time. That's what happens when you uh, get people who are in their zone of genius. So I'm really excited for him to be here today. Um, at this time, I'm going to give Clive the opportunity to tell us a little bit about it before we get started. Well, I want to say first, I want to say I appreciate it for having me on here. And it's been great meeting you, learning your story, hearing mm -hmm. super mom, having so many kids. I was like, my mom got a lot of kids, and I'm her. She was like impressed how many kids you had, and you raised all these kids. So it's very been a blessing, you know. And I'm, I'm always here to answer your questions, and mm -hmm. um, you know that's what I'm here to do to help the people, so that we can try to build our businesses and help, and our businesses help other people. So that's yes. the main thing. Awesome. So you know, tell everybody a little bit about what your specialty is. Well, my specialty is is helping people get the right foundation in their business and then putting automation into that process, right? A lot of times I see businesses, even businesses that are making money, they're overrun by time. You know, they, they don't have a control on their business. They're going from one fire to the other and they don't have a complete process in there. And then that's the first thing to get the right process so you can get the time back and then automate it. That you just, so I always tell people automation is the fire to the fuel, but you have to have you have to have the fuel first, right? You have to you have to be able to say, hey, what am I going? What does the process look like? What does this look like? Where we're going to? What's the roadmap so we can know exactly where we're going to? And then the automation is the car. You don't have to do it by foot, right? You know the roadmap. You don't have to walk it. You're able to get, jump in your car, and that's the automation part, and gets you there a lot smoother. Still maintenance to do. It's not you know. It's, I tell people it's auto, it's automation, but that doesn't mean you don't have to do anything anymore. It just makes it a little bit easier. I love that. And so, you know, for a lot of people who are listening, you know, they're starting new businesses or, you know, maybe they're seeing that the way that they had to pivot and do stuff uh, originally, now they have to change it a little bit with the virus and, you know, being quarantined and stuff like that. So walk us through what type of automation we could be thinking about doing because some people are so used to doing stuff the way they've always been doing it. You know, they're old and set in their ways in terms of systems and stuff. So give us some ideas of some ways that we can automate. Oh, um, a lot of times people ask me about the automation first, but I always go back to mapping out your process, whatever that process is. Okay. So a lot of times we think about you can't automate a, 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 a messy system, right? It just can't okay. be done. So that's the main thing that you have to really understand is that the first thing you want to do is map out your process. And I always have this process. You know, we always talk about the client journey and we always talk about marketing, sales, and the client delivery, right? What's the client experience? So those three things that you want to have right there, understanding what that is, mapping that out then you can then you can start talking about automation but a lot of times people are either they either hate automation they're like oh i, I want to get close to my people and i want it to be one-on-one -on -one, or you know i think i'm going to lose a relationship so they don't do automation or people want to automate everything it's like i want to automate everything and sit on the beach and i'm like those are two extremes that really don't happen um you get close to you your system actually lets you get more personable they actually let you be closer to your people and when you do so that that lets it be there and when you try to automate everything that means you're just abandoning responsibility your business automation only allows you to work on other things in the business that are important so if you go out if you're the front person marketing on you know whatever channel you're marketing on if you're doing networking you just want the automation behind you to be able to amplify that and make sure everything is running correctly so those are the two things that i tell people to think about first is the process what is your process manually you should be able to do all these things manually first then you can talk about automation. I love that, you know, because that's just uh, like everybody who decides they want to be somewhere next week, but then they don't map out how they're going to get there, you know? So it's the everyday things that we really need to be 
conscious of when it comes to kind of mapping those goals out. So what are, what do you find are some of the problems that people might have with some of their processes? You know, what, what are some key things that they should have in that manual system that can help them with their automation? The first thing I always tell people is you have to get clear on what you deliver. What's your, what's your offer, right? So a lot of times I ask people, what do you, what do you sell? And they're like, oh, I sell some kind of widget, right? I sell a service or I sell a product. And that's not your actual offer. It's everything that goes around it, right? So people can sell coaching. People can sell mechanic shop. But all the things that go around with it, if it's a guarantee, if it's an extra bonus, if it's a discount, whatever, you know, how we deliver the service, right? If we do it in your office, at your home, in, in our office, right? If we do it over Zoom, how do you actually deliver that service? then that right there is the core of everything because your service, how you deliver it is the, is the thing that is the foundation for everything. So people are not clear on how they deliver a service. I, I buy a service and I get it one way and you buy the same service and you get it another way. And that doesn't guarantee consistency. So the first thing I always tell people is get clear on what you're offering, right? Who do you serve? How do you serve them, right? Those are the two things you want to always think about. Who do you serve? How do you serve them? So how do you serve these people? Do you serve them online? Do you serve them offline? Do you do both, right? There's a strategy for each one of those. So you want to think about what your offer is and what all comes with that. So if you have the product, what comes with that product? Is it a guarantee? Is it, you know, do we do we do free shipping? You know, so when you buy from Amazon, you don't just buy the product from Amazon. You get the fast delivery, right? You get the, you get the guarantee. Right, you get all these things that come with buy from Amazon. It's not just about the product. It's not even just about the cheap delivery. I like that. Now, so do you think that some people have the element of fear or procrastination or overwhelm with being clear on some of these things? You know, because yeah. you know, so talk to us about that and how, you know, what advice would you give them to kind of you know, narrow that down because some of these you're asking great questions, but some people feel intimidated. So why why do you think that is? Because they've never been asked those questions before, right? So and some people have been making money like this, right? And sometimes we live in confusion and all we know is confusion. So we're content in confusion, right? You, you okay. sometimes people are in a in a bad situation and you're like, why do you keep living like that? And that's because that's all they know. And they're used to it and they're accustomed to it. So it could be a better outcome, a better situation, even a, you know, a relationship with somebody stuck in a bad relationship. And we're like, why don't you get out of it? That's what they know. So they always attract it to them. In a business, if all you know is selling like this, hey, I've been making money. I'm chasing the deal. I always say survival marketing where you're chasing the deal. <laughs> you're just trying to survive. <laughs> it's just survival marketing, right? You just try to chase the deal. You, you, you generate some interest. You're like, hey, I, I got, I'm selling a service right here. I'm selling a product. Once you, and then somebody says, oh, let me, let me find out more about it. And then 10 people say they want to find out about it. Three people say they actually want to buy, right? And then one person buys and you're happy because you made money off of that. You're like, yeah, I made money. But guess what? You got to start that whole process over again. You got to be, hey, I got a product, a service. And you're running around trying to survive because you're waiting for the next deal. You don't have a pipeline of leads coming in. You don't have a pipeline of prospects coming in. And you're not fulfilling a whole bunch of customers. So those three things are not happening in se sequentially. So you don't know that, hey, I know that 10 people came in the door as leads. I know based on my numbers that five of them are going to be prospects. And I know that based on my numbers, on my metrics, that three of them are going to be clients. And having that continuously going in. So you're like, hey, if I can pump in 10, 20 more of these qualified leads and get them to become 10 qualified prospects, I know that six of them will be customers. And this is where you want understanding, where you're understanding your numbers and you're understanding what's going on. So people get people get scared, and the fear is is because they don't know anything else. It think, they think it's overwhelming. They think it's daunting. But that's why you have coaches, right? You know, that's why that's why we're here. And I always tell people, I have a coach for everything. I'm I'm on a actually I'm on a detox right now, and I have a coach for that, right? You know, she's helping me go through a 14 day detox, eating nothing but raw foods. And I tell people all the time, I said, what sports team doesn't have a coach, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. LeBron James is the best player in the world. They don't just tell him, just get out on the court and just do it by yourself. <laughs> He's the best player in the world, right? They still don't say, and the reason that is, is because a coach is objective. 
right? He spoke, a coach is on the outside looking in. They can see things that you don't see. Even a coach, any good coach has to have a coach, right? Because you're like, I need a coach, right? So everybody, I have a business coach, right? So, and those are the things that happen because you're looking inside your own business. It's hard to be objective. This is your baby. You love it. You fear, you, you know, you don't want to get hurt. You know, you like, yo, I, I love my baby. You know, this, you build it from the ground up. So that's where I think the fear comes from. Not really understanding what to do. A lot of entrepreneurs wake up every day confused. They don't know what to do. They wake up and be like, what should I do today? There's 10,000 things to do. Which one should I focus on? And I've been in that situation where it's like 10,000 things to do and you do nothing because you're paralyzed by fear because you don't, and I'm not, I'm not talking about just anybody. I'm talking about what I've been through as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You wake up, you say, there's 10,000 things to do and I don't do them because I don't know what to do. I don't know. I, I don't know which one is more important than the other. I don't have a plan. I, I was just trying to make sales, so I don't know. I love that. And now, so walk us through some actual income producing activities, because you know, like you said, people don't know what to do. You know, you do have a portion of your time that goes towards marketing, some towards actually providing the service or product or whatever. So. What are some of those income producing things that we should be mindful of when we're asking ourselves those questions? The first thing is, is to get focused, right? Mm -hmm. So focus on what's your core product or service? What is it like? Hey, a lot of times people have ideas and I've done it myself where it's like, hey, I can offer the world everything. Like I know so many things. I can do this. I can do that, right? You're like, yo, I, I could do so many things. But if you just stay focused on one thing, people need that thing right there's somebody that needs that thing there's a group of people that need that thing you're going to be comfortable and make the money on that thing but you can't serve people with all with the highest service if you're trying to serve 10 different type of people so the first thing is, is to get focused on what you're doing and then i always go back to mapping out the client journey so a lot of people don't want to get sales is one of the biggest things that i, I see people having a problem with mm -hmm. And the thing I've told everybody about sales is people be like, I don't like to sell. I said, well, you don't like to sell. That means you don't like to serve people. What do you mean? I said, because people have discretionary income mm -hmm. and they're going to go spend it on sneakers. They're going to go spend it on this and that. If you truly believe what you have can help people, then you have to sell. It, unless you don't believe in what you, what you have to offer, then you shouldn't be selling. Because if you believe in what you have, you'd be like, look, it's better that you come spend this Five hundred thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, whatever years, then then go buy sneakers, then to go, you know, spend them on foolishness, right? You're like, this right here is going to change your life in this area. So you, people, you should be saying, hey, yeah, I am a salesman. I do sell because I know the value that my service is going to bring to you. I know the value that my product is going to bring to you, and that's why you should be confident when you're selling. And that's why sales is the most. If you want to know about revenue producing, you need to get focused first on what your offer is being focused on one offer and then learning how to sell and understanding that selling is serving because when you don't sell to people and you hold back your services and you're like, Oh, I don't want to do that. You're not giving them a chance to actually get what they need to improve their life in the area that you help them. in. I love that now. So, you know, and even like, you know, with automation, like some of the things with how your selling technique is, that's some things that you can automate, you know, like the, way you verbiage you use an email your script or whatever so when it comes to helping somebody transition from feeling like well i'm just you know telling them about this stuff and you know you want to transition from uh selling to serving what are some things that they should say or do to make that transition in their business you know, so how should they talk to that client or what are some key techniques or something they should use to do that? Does that question make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You want to, what first, so the problem is, is that there's not a quick fix to a lot of things, right? And, you know, so a lot of times I tell people, I say, hey, I'll help you. You know, we always say we help people build six figure businesses that are easy to run, right? But that doesn't mean it's going to be built overnight. <laughs> Right. right. <laughs> so everybody we, wants that though, right? Everybody wants that. Yeah, they want I tell them, I said, I don't have any magic beans over here, right? It's gonna be hard work, right? <laughs> when I say it's easy to run, that means that there's no confusion. Right? right. That means that you understand every day you wake up and say, Hey, 
I say, it's not hard, it's hard work. You're going to wake up every day and understand what you have to do. So going back to the sales part and how you can, and how you actually give it to people where you're serving them, that's where knowing your client is, is very important. You want to know who your target marker is because you want to know their fears. You want to know their objections. You want to know what's keeping them up at night because then you can talk to that. And now you don't want to talk to them as in, hey, I'm pounding, you need to get this, get this, get this. You want to talk to them. What are you, you want to know their fears. You want to talk to them before they even get there. Hey, I've been in your space or I've dealt with five, 10 people, 20 people, 100 people who have went through what you went through. I know what you're, what you're already thinking because that's what makes you get focused when you understand what your actual market is and you understand what you're selling, you go back to knowing who your target market is. When you did all the pre-work that needs to be done, when you go to sell, you don't have to shove anything down anybody's throat. Because what, sometimes we get on the phone and we don't know anybody. And if I'm talking to the same type of person all the time, guess what? I know them. If you get in a room full of mothers, right, they're all going to be talking the same language. You know what I'm saying? Because they've all <laughs> been through the same situation, right? And then when business people get in the room, they're all talking the same language. And so, so because you know business people, if that's your market, you're going to talk to them and understand that. If you're if you're doing cleaning business people, you're going to understand the market even better, right? So if I talk to moms who raise their kids in the, in the city, right, who, and who raise their kids with a husband, right, th that's a different set. That's getting even more segmented than saying, hey, a mom who had her kids without without a husband, right? So when people say, hey, I talk to single moms and help them through their trauma. I talk to married women and help them through their marriage with kids. Those are different. Those are different target markets because even though we can relate as mothers, when you get even more targeted and know your clients and say, "Hey, I know mothers who have who are married and have kids," I can talk to them and I because I know it specifically. I've never been a single mother. I can talk about motherhood with you, but I can't talk about the single part. So those are the things. And I'm and I'm saying you can. So when you understand that, when you focus on what your offer is. That's why I come back to this offer is so important because you have to understand who do you, who do you want to give it to? Who is it for? Who is it not for? And going back to the motherhood thing, it's like, hey, this program is for mothers who are married, not mothers who are single, right? That, you know, who, who, who haven't been married, whatever, you know, however you define the demographics and the psychographics. So that's where the selling becomes very easy. But when you're trying to sell to everybody, it gets very hard. And exhausting because, you know, that's just like, you know, you everybody who you come in contact with, if you're trying to sell to everybody, you are spending your time trying to create or recreate a product or service for that specific person instead exactly. of always saying like, okay, I'm over here and I sell watermelon. But if mm. you're over here and you got... 20,000 things at your store, when that customer comes in, you know, one, they're overwhelmed. You may be overwhelmed. You know, you're offering, oh, I got watermelon. No, I don't eat watermelon. I got bananas, you know, and so it's just crazy when you could just have it where you are attracting the right people. Now, um, walk us through, you know, so we're talking about the pain points of people and the benefits. Right. So sometimes people who are in business, they let's just take my situation where I've overcome depression. Right. So you've got some coaches who kind of help you overcome depression, but they've been where the depressed people are. What advice would you give them when it comes to selling? Because a lot of times or making an offer, they get caught up in that victim that the person is experiencing the victim mode. So it's like, oh, I want to help them. You know, I was going to charge them, but, you know, I'm trying to, or I'm going to give them a break instead of staying as the expert. You know, sometimes if you can identify with where someone is being, you kind of have that compassion that interacts, interferes with your pay and profitability for your business. Does that question make sense? Yes, it does. So what happens is I said, if you, before you can serve anybody else, you got to serve yourself. Because you, if you, if I go out here and take an analogy, is if I try to help, uh, if I say everybody who comes right, I want to push the car, right? I want their car gets stranded. I'm like, hey, I got to go get everybody, push everybody's car, right? Mm -hmm. But if I don't eat, if I don't nourish myself, if I don't make sure I'm in, sh in shape, I can't go help those people. I'm the you got to think about the greater good. 
because there's going to be one person that comes along and you're going to be like, oh, I feel for this person right here. And I'm not saying that you can't take that and, and maybe somebody comes along and you're like, hey, I identify with that person. But in your business, if you're not, if you're not self-sustained, if you're overwhelmed, how can you show up as your best self? If you're always giving away your service and you're starving for food, you don't have enough, you don't, you can't make enough and your business is, is dying. How can you serve somebody? You're doing a disservice to the people because you're not showing up as your best self. You're like, oh, what's going on with my coach? Oh, he has money problems, right? And now he can't show up as his best self. And I've seen it too many times where people, they can't show up as their best self because their number one thing is serving, right? And I'm like, no, you're missing the point that you have to make sure that you're right first, that you are good. So when people come along, there's going to be, you know, as Jesus said, the poor will always be with us. You know what I'm saying? Right. And right. that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. So people are going to come along and afford your services. How I try to uh, accentuate that is I use my time, right? So I look at time more than money. And I always say to people, I said, I give away a lot. If you can do it with all the free resources I try to give out, that's cool. I want you to be able to put it together and do it like that. The more, the closer I have, the more time I have to give, the more money you have to pay. That's just how it is. Because the time we can't get that back, right? I can give away the free resources. People can put that together. There's always going to be enough clients because there's always going to be somebody that's going to say, hey, I'm not doing it by myself. I need you to come hold my hand and put it together. So I don't have any secrets. I tell people all the time. I said, look, what I sell is I sell automation and the client journey. That's what I do. I help people build out their client journey and then we put automation in it. There's no secret behind it. There's nothing I got. There's nothing to figure out. There's no, you know, I don't have no mystical tricks. I hear the guys on YouTube, I, this one secret from Shanghai, you know, China, gonna get you $10 million. I'm like, listen, I don't got none of that. I just got, if you got a business and you, and you, you those are for people, to me, I'm just saying, I don't, I'm not against anything that anybody's doing. Right. For, for, for people who do that, that's for people who are looking for a business, right? They're like, they're like, I wanna be an entrepreneur. But what I looked at as an entrepreneur, and those are, those are what we call opportunity entrepreneurs. They just see an opportunity and they, and they get into that business for that. But mm -hmm. my main goal is for people who are contributors, right? So more times it is service providers, coaches, consultants, right? People who have local businesses because they're here to serve the community. They actually love what they do. They're not just in it for opportunity. They started because they had a passion because it was like, hey, I wanted to give people this great service or product. And so that's my mission is, kind of, is to help people who have that to be successful and not have to worry about money and be able to have a system in process, a system in place so that they can be able to give to the people that they want to and be able to serve and not have to worry about the financial, not have to worry about the systems. They have everything in place and what their main focus is on serving the people. I love that. And I mean, you know, that, that is just some good advice because that is so true about being the best version of you and uh, coming with your A game. Really, you know, that's just how it is. And that's how you're able to attract and everything and uh, do the things that you do. So that's an excellent point. Now, so what do you do to keep yourself relevant and flexible with things that change? You know, we're in this pandemic and I'm sure it's affected how your business is run. But what are some advice that you would give people to make sure that they have a mindset to evolve, to learn, that type of thing. What do you do? So I'm always try, I always try to be flexible. I always say, hey, my systems are there, but they can change at any time, right? So it's not like I'm just stuck in the system, but the client journey never changes, right? right that, okay. that, so the, the, the whole framework of the client journey never changes, but what goes inside of the client journey may change, but everything in the framework doesn't mean that it's gonna change. So what we do is, so what I do to stay nimble and stay flexible is to always assess the situations. And this is why you have to have, you have to be strategic because new things come up and you have to say, hey, all right, let's reassess. Let's have a meeting. Let's see what's going on. Even if there's meetings by yourself, you need to have meetings with yourself every day. I tell people all the time. You have, to have, you have to have a by myself meeting, right? You know, I have a by myself meeting every morning. I, I think about what happened the last 24 hours. What's going to happen the, the next 24 hours? I have a by myself meeting on Sunday where we talk about all the agendas, right? And that's even before I even meet with my team, right? So these are the things that you have to have where you're actually assessing what's going on because then we become reactionary. Some people thrive during the pandemic and other people fail during the pandemic. 
And that was because some people panicked and other people were like, oh no, we didn't panic. There's restaurants still open, right? That, that, didn't, that made it through the pandemic. There's people that, there's all kinds of trades that made it through the pandemic, right? When we took back and we said, how can we, how can we readjust? You may have to sell a new product. You may have to do a new offer. You may have to serve something else. These are the things that you want to be able to do that you can understand and assess the situation. And this is why you want to keep having a, a meeting with yourself. This is why you want to keep having a meeting with your team, because you want to always reassess what's going on. Is anything new going on? We've just been hit by this. We need to see what's going on. What is our new plan? What is our client journey? Is our product relevant for the market right now? Is our offering relevant for the market right now? Is there a new offering that we can give to the market right now that's not being served or underserved? I love that whole thing about the meetings with yourself. I'm with you on that. <laughs> you know, but it is so true because to me, that meeting is that reflection. Okay. 24 hours, you know, what did I do? You know, because if you go on for weeks, days, months, you're blaming people about some stuff. And it's those pockets of time of reflection that you say, you know, well, why am I mad? I don't have any clients or whatever, because I haven't called anybody or I haven't put any new products out, or I haven't followed up on some of these emails. So it's then that you're able to really kind of figure out, okay, I'm not making money, but I can trace it back to why it's not happening, as opposed to blaming people and then going into overwhelm and all this other stuff. So that's some good stuff right there. Okay. All entrepreneurs, all entrepreneurs, remember that if, you, if you're the CEO, if you're the boss, the buck stops with you. You know what I'm saying? I said, a hundred years from now, when they ask about your business, whatever the name of your business is, they say, what happened to that business right there? They'll be like, yo, you know, he didn't make it. They're not going to say the second man behind you didn't make it. They're not going to talk right. about the fifth man in the company. They're not going to talk about outside forces. They're not going to talk about the pandemic. They're going to talk about you didn't make it. That's all they're going to say. So you got to remember, there's no excuses. And this is just part of entrepreneurship. There's no excuses in it. So when you understand that, that you are responsible and, you know, we don't have the tools. I don't know that we don't have the tools. We're not connecting with each other to get those tools. There's a big community of entrepreneurs, but as business people, and I did this myself, I've seen this with, with other people where they're not involved with anybody else. The only time they come to the community is when they have a question to ask, right? It's never nothing. Hey, let's share these things just because we want to share, right? right? I've had some wins. What are some losses? Let me tell you what I'm doing in my business. You know, and it's just like, oh, no, 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 I got a problem right now. How do you, how do I fix this? And I was that same person. I'd be, I'd just be running to a group. How do you fix this? You know, instead of saying, hey, let's build community and you, and being ahead of these things way before, because once I started getting ahead of things, I started learning that these things are, that I started being proactive instead of reactive. I started okay. having things in front of that. And I was like, okay, I know exactly, I, this is how I want to do it. Oh, I didn't know you, oh, you're doing that. That's a nice strategy right there. Now I haven't had this problem yet. Right. But when that problem came up, I was already ahead of it because I've already talked to other people just talking business, just talking shop, exactly. just, just communicating with, 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 a, with a community. I love that. that. So you've given us some great golden nuggets. So I hope everybody watching is taking notes. If not, they can go back and rewatch this. You know, that's one of the things that's great about video. So what's the best way for the audience to get a hold of you? Well, you know, they can always come to our website, Black Business Prosperity, you know, dot com. They can join the Facebook group, Black Business Prosperity, the Facebook group. They can also text 678-498-1664 and they can just put uh, Atkins. I'm going to make a text just for you, right? And and they can get a, and, and I always tell people, hey, just jump on a call, answer a few questions on our, on our sheet, jump on a call, see if we can help your business, you know, I, even if we, even, we're going to help your business regardless. You know what I mean? Like, even if you right. don't get nothing else from this call, you're going to get some value, some things that you can implement regardless of what. So if that's something, that's the way you can, you can get to me. And uh, that's what we do. We're in, like I said, we're in Facebook all the time with, in the Facebook group. That's where we communicate. We're building it up. Um, we're just making sure that we make sure to put together everything. So that we have the resources just talking. And like I said, I want to make sure to put everything in there with the client journey. Mm -hmm how to put things together, how you should build your business out so that people can who want to do it themselves can go ahead and look at that. And then if they ever want to need my help, you know, then they can come in, they can come and get my help. Awesome. And then do you have anything coming up? Is there something that's uh, any programs or something that you got yeah. coming up? 
Yeah, definitely <laughs> got the business building, got the business building uh boot camp coming up. You know what I mean? So that's gonna be October twenty first, you know. So we're gonna be putting that together. Uh it's gonna be a five day event where it's just talking about all the fundamentals of, of building your business online. And it's funny, we're not even it goes before the client journey where I talk, start talking about what are you, what's your mission? What's your vision? What are you trying to accomplish? What's your offer, right? Getting to those core root things that you need to have a foundation of your business so that once you walk away from the business building uh, boot camp, you'll be able to have that foundation all the way set. So come and join us for that. You can look that up and we're there. Awesome. And what final words do you want to share with everybody? final words is that every day you wake up is another day another opportunity that's my favorite saying because god blesses us wakes up every day we get another opportunity to make something happen a lot of people are hurting right now make sure that you look out for your fellow man and woman that you you know saying a kind word that you're embracing everybody and that you just you know that you want to be pouring in positivity right because it's going to come back to you if you pour in the positivity and you make sure and then also learn your craft Right. I don't. That's why I say pick one thing. Make sure you be the master at your craft. You know, don't be the jack of all trades. Master your craft because once you master your craft, people going to be like, okay, I'm going to him for that. You, I, you can make a living by mastering your craft. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you may not get rich. You mean if you're just if you just make chairs and you just build chairs, you can make a living making chairs. Right. Whatever your craft is, you just be master of your craft. You're gonna make good money at it. You don't have to be a jack of all trades, right? Somebody asked me, we had our cleaning company, we had a cleaning company and we don't do commercial, right? Somebody said, why are you not getting the commercial money? I said, well, we're not going to get the commercial money until we, they stop letting us clean houses. So why would I focus on being a resident uh, on commercial cleaning when, whenever they tell me, whenever I, can, I wake up one day and they say, yo, there's no more residential houses to clean. I'm not missing out on anything. It's just an illusion in your mind that you're missing out on money over here that you think that you're missing out on money over here. Just until customers start coming, stop coming in, that's all it is. You want to do, all you want to do is add on services onto whatever your core offer is. That's it. You don't want to go into a whole nother field. So that's my thing. So, and you know what? Commercial and residential, they got different supplies. You they know, it's, uh, it's in, bought in different bulk items. And, you know, I just know this dealing with this large family yeah. we got over here. Yeah, but. Yeah. <laughs> So it, you in a whole different bracket for supplies and all that kind of stuff as opposed to- It's a to whole, different, it's a whole different business. Hey. You just open up a whole nother business. They don't even, people don't, whatever you open up a whole nother line or something, that's a whole nother business. You thinking that you just, so another true. Office, that's a whole nother business. Now, you know, and that's a good point. You need to know who you are getting that feedback from. Because if you're hearing this from people that are not business oriented, they just look at the dollar signs. <laughs> they don't know behind there that that is a different business, you know. That so you bring different. up a good point. <laughs> they think it's just yo, just why you don't do commercial? I'm like <laughs> what? You know what I'm saying? But I'm always I'm the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. That's Absolutely, all you got to keep focused. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been great. Well, Clive, I've really enjoyed it, and um, I encourage everybody to reach out to you. A great Facebook group. He comes in and does uh, teachings and trainings. So. A lot of every Monday, content. every Monday we did business yes. building Monday. You already know we we in the building every Monday. I'm coming in, and then the nighttime we're gonna be answering questions. So every Monday, just come and see me, and uh, I'll be have at twelve o'clock. We're there every day, and uh, that's what we do. Awesome. So you guys make sure you join the group and contact them. Get that discovery call so you can find out how you can serve better as we in 2020 you want to start off with a fresh start in 2021 so why not get the right uh feedback that you need in order for you to be the best version of yourself so i always aim for this mm -hmm. oh, i just want to say my fault the, Go all, ahead. the aim when you said that i just thought about one thing mm -hmm. to build a business that serves you your clients and your community always remember that there's the three people we're serving all the time serving you your clients and your community at all times. That's what we're, that's the business we're trying to build. A business I love that. You, your clients and your community. I love that. That's good. The three C's. Well, no, it's uh, you, your clients and your community. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always coming right. up with a quick way to do I know something. It, acronym I, know something. I, I got you. I got you. I got you. It's all right though. Yeah, that's, that's my thing though. That's it. 
Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful evening. Thanks again for watching and we will see y'all the next time. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks for everything. All right.